everybody, and welcome back to Musings by Nikki. Today, we are starting our Chunky Needle Book quilted covers. So, like I said in my intro video, if you have watched that, if you have not watched the intro video, you might want to do that. Um, and that you can see, it's just the video right previous to this one. And um, I, am t I talked through the supply list and kind of showed the ex example of what we're going to be doing. But today we are going to be taking this pile of blue scrappy fabric goodness and turning it into a crumb quilt cover, something like this, right? And then eventually it will be turned into the cover to our chunky needle book uh, slash journal because I'm a journal maker. So. Uh, we are going to work on turning this pile into this, like, essentially it's a quilt block or a quilt topper. Um, I am not, let me just give you my warnings right now, my, my, um, not warnings, what's the word I'm looking for? My disclaimers. Uh, I am not a quilter. I am a sewer, but I sew by uh, either, I can do patterns, but most of the time when I'm sewing, I just like to make it up as I go. And that is very much uh, a skill that you will use when you're making this. If you can divorce yourself from any sort of necessary process and just totally go with the flow, then this kind of thing is for you. And um, it, I find it quite satisfying, honestly, once you get the hang of kind of doing what you're doing here. So uh, we're going to use this pile of scraps. Um, you're going to want some that are either this, like the same theme or the same color family. I am using, obviously, kind of a blue and green um, color way here. And what I'm going to do, I have some, so these are scraps from all kinds of things, cutoffs. These are some quilt blocks, but they're not actually quilt blocks because see how I can't, this is what I'm talking about when I'm trying to line up and make corners. They're not even close to on, but this was for an apron I made myself and I didn't really care. I just used some pre-cut um, quilt squares so I didn't have to cut them. And <laughs> then I turned them into somewhat uh, kind of lined up-ish and then I sewed them into an apron and I don't care that they're not lined up right because I, um, I use it to, to quilt it or to craft in. But I'm going to use, so I have a couple of these four patch quilts uh, pieces or whatever you want to call them. And then I've just got some scraps. Some are longer, some are smaller. It does not matter. Uh, you actually want smaller pieces like this. This is a great time to use up your smallest little pieces of stuff like this. Uh, I've got some strips. I've got a long strips like a t torn off edged pieces of things. Um, it doesn't matter. They don't have to all be calico. They don't have to all be the same weight of anything. Uh, they just have to be pieces that you like the way they all look together. That's all. That's all it has to be. Oh, a little piece of lace got in there. Here's some more little crumbs. See, I learned that term. Don't I sound all official? Um, I learned that term. These are crumbs, um, which makes sense, right? Here in journal world, we tend to call this stuff scraps, but you know, these are crumbs. And some of them are smaller. Oh, here's another one of those quilt blocky things. And I'll show you how we're going to use that even though it's already made up. So, and then I've got a few, ooh, I've got a few bright little pieces in here too. I thought, why not? So, uh, we are going to, they end up being so small, right? Like some of these pieces are literally just so small that you barely even see them. That's when I thought some of these would be just a little splash. So, uh, the first thing that you need to know about this, well, you're gonna want a pair of good fabric scissors or sharp scissors. These are my fabric scissors. Um, because I've, you know, I have people that wander in my studio and take my fabric scissors and cut paper and things, tags off of stuff with them. So now I've taken to tying big pieces of, I, this is a Bernadette Banner thing. I'm sure lots of people do it. I just saw Bernadette Banner do it. And so now I do it. All right. So here's what we want. We actually want smaller pieces like this. And what we're going to start doing in the beginning of this is making 
so now again, you guys, I'm going to sound really official here because I've watched some videos, <laughs> but we're going to start making two patches. So essentially it's just two pieces of fabric that are sewn together right side to right side. Okay. That's literally all it is. And you can do this in a whole variety of different ways. But before I get to making those, I want to whack these down a bit because this is way too big for my application. I could use these and just sew them together and, you know, make the quilt cover like that. But I really like the little tiny bits and pieces of a crumb quilt look. So I'm going to save this part because this is already like a four patch. But I'm going to cut off some pieces along the side here. Now, these are essentially two patches, but I'm going to even cut those down into smaller crumbs. So I'm kind of making my own crumbs here. And this is now, this is what a two patch is going to look like. Two pieces of fabric, literally just sewn together and then opened up. Okay, so we're going to make some more of those. I'm going to put these pieces aside. Like I said, I'm going to save this middle. And there's another two patch. So I'm going to make a little pile of my two patches here. And there is, this is called a four patch. I bet you know why. Because there's four pieces. See how that works? So I'm going to put that in my pile of, well, actually, I'm going to start a separate pile I have a two patch pile and a four patch pile because I'm going to cut a couple of the centers out. So I'm going to cut some of these up. All right, so I've got those whacked up. Let me just show you something quick. You will notice I was getting a little wonky and haphazard. It is totally legit to do that. Matter of fact, sometimes it's actually more fun if you have some weird angled pieces and we'll get to that in a minute. There is not a lot that needs to be said about being super, you know, careful or specific in the way that you do this. So, um, there are a couple different ways that you can start this off. Okay, so um, essentially what we want is to make a pile of some two patch pieces and then we'll make four patches and then we'll just keep connecting and connecting. You can do it in a couple different ways. One of the first ways is since I have um, some strips, I've got this, here's a strip right here. So, oh, also um, a word about irons. If you are one of those people that really feels the need to have everything be nice and flat, you can certainly keep an iron off to the side. I... Um, I do not do that. So uh, another trigger warning, if you're somebody that's gonna get super irritated by not having everything nice and flat, cause say maybe you are a quilter and um, you usually do things like iron and stuff out nice and neat. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's not how I am gonna do this. Um, anyway, one way you can start doing this is, I've got my fabric right side up and then I've got this little crumb, right? So I'm gonna put that right side down. So we're putting right sides together and then I'm going to sew along this edge. Then I will continue doing that with more pieces, right? This doesn't have a right or wrong side and I will sew along that. And then here is another piece. I will maybe sew the long way here. And in doing this, I will have this strip, right? And then I can fold them open, but I can cut them apart. So this is a, a faster way to do it. Otherwise you can just take, you know, a piece and a piece and sew them together like this. And then when you open them up, you've got a two, um, a two square. So I will take you over. I think I've got it figured out that I can take you to my sewing machine and hopefully have a somewhat decent view of what I'm doing over there. Um, because this is definitely not one of those videos where I can say, hold on, I'm going to sew and I'll be right back. So let's go to the sewing machine. Okay guys. So I've got my first little two patch here. Hopefully this is, you know, as good as I can get <laughs> as good as I can show you. I have just regular plain old white thread in my machine. I'm using the same needle that I use to sew paper because I am not one of those people that switches out their needles. Um, 
and uh, I have it just on a regular straight stitch. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm not going to back stitch or anything because this is all going to get, um, it, it kind of finishes itself as we go, which makes more sense as we go. <laughs> so I am just sewing the two straight edges together. And remember at this point, you should have your right sides together and you just want to sew as straight a line as possible. Now, what I'm going to do is grab my other strip that I was showing you because if you can sew multiple, you know, things together at the same time, then we'll just cut them apart. So uh, to make it go a little faster, I'm just going to go continue on and um, keep going down the side of this strip now that I had kind of shown you laid out over there. And then I'm going to kind of get this one situated here. And the only thing I'm kind of worried about is just trying to make my, uh, you know, edges as straight as I can on top of each other. But again, that even kind of finishes as it goes. So I'm going to grab some more pieces here. Here are two more pieces. I am going to lay them right sides together along this edge and I'm going to feed them through. I'm going to go back this way because this is to have my excess out here. I fed that last piece through the wrong way, but no worries. It was no big deal. I'm going to go along that edge and I'm going to just keep grabbing pieces from my pile over here. And then here's another weird shape, wonky crumb. I'm just going to line that up along a side that seems to kind of match up. Those two sides seem about the same length. So I'm gonna go through those two as well. And I'm just gonna keep doing that until I get a bunch of pieces sewn together, just two at a time, two at a time. And then um, I will catch back up with you. Another thing you can do is take a somewhat larger piece. So I've got this kind of larger piece and we're gonna create several two by two block potentials here by taking another one of my larger pieces. So I've got this long strip of this green here. I'm gonna lay those two down and put them together and um, then we'll be able to cut that apart into multiple smaller like two squares and stuff. So I'm going to sew those two together as well. And then while I've got the rest of this uh, strip, I'm going to attach some more pieces to it on the bottom side here. So I've got this piece of fabric and I'm going to lay it right side up because this one is right side down. And I'm going to just try and line it up along here and sew those two strips together. And I've got just a little bit left here, so I'm going to see if I can find something that'll fit there. Let's see. Maybe one of these last, oops, I want to say right side up, right sides together. Okay. Now I'm going to just cut and we will, um, whoops, that didn't cut all the way through. We will cut all these pieces apart and I will see you back over at the desk. All right, so I cut apart and opened up my pile of two patches and I have got all of them, right? I was able to cut down and cut them apart. So, you know, the ones where we made the long strips, I was able to just cut those into chunks and now I've got two patch chunks. <laughs> and I've opened them up and finger pressed them open 
So I've got all of these little pieces. Don't matter if they're wonky, we will use those in all kinds of fun ways. So I've got all of my pieces, my little two pieces sewn together, even the little tiny ones. You can keep even the smallest crumbs. I don't have that many little tiny pieces because um, I used to not keep little, little teeny weeny pieces like this, but now I do because I've discovered I know how to do this. Um, so I'm going to keep working through some of these pieces here. I don't think you need to watch me sew all of them together. Um, just remember, right sides together, right sides together as you do this. Long strips because then you can cut them into chunks and you have multiple two patches then. So I'm going to keep put, uh, piling some of these up and putting them through the machine and then I will come back and show you what we do with our pile of two patches to make them into four patches and eventually the whole piece. I'll be right back. Alright, I've got my long run of two patches. I'm going to again cut them apart. If I can figure out what I did with them. There we go. <laughs> these longer ones again where I've got a longer strip I just cut them apart uh, and then like I said don't worry about you know your sewing falling apart because you didn't back stitch over everything because um, like I said it will get finished kind of in itself as we go here's another one where I've sewn two larger pieces together and to another smaller piece so I'm just going to cut them apart and then this is a longer let's see let's get those and we'll take that down and then this is a larger one and I'm going to cut that into a few pieces then I'm going to go ahead and open all of these up and you can kind of just finger press whichever way the seam wants to go um, it doesn't you know like Again, the back side of this is going to be kind of a hot mess. Unless you're more perfectionist than I am, which if you are, go go for it by all means. Um, but I am not. So the back side of my uh, quilt top, quilt square, whatever you want to call it, uh, is a hot mess. And that's, <laughs> that's fine. I'm totally okay with that. And actually, this is going to sound like a made up uh, reason why it's okay for that to happen. But it's true. Um, it's actually kind of nice. Oh, that's got like a weird random. This is a very fray, fray y piece. Does that make any sense? Um, it's kind of nice because it adds some bulk. And this is going to be a standalone, you know, just the quilted cover. So having some extra, you know, bulk from all the seams and stuff in there is okay. It kind of stabilizes it. It gives it a little more weight and heft. So that is, that is a okay. This one, you know, I'm going to cut this one down again. All right. There's that. Okay. Now I have got my piles of um, two patches. And we're going to start connecting them into something bigger. So what we're going to do is take our, you know, finger press opened, two patches, and then we're going to start sewing um, together, right? So what I try to, you, this is one of those things, I'm going to separate these out into ones that like have light colorways so that I'm going to kind of, I try to avoid, my only rule is I try to avoid putting two of the same color or very similar colors right next to each other. Um, like I wouldn't want to put this here because then I've got these two intentionally close. If I can avoid that, I try to sew them, um, you know, like totally different colors together as I'm doing this. At some point, this is going to get so big and the pieces are so small, it's not going to matter as much. But in these first few steps like this, um, I am going to try to do that. So you're just going to take and um, if you've got excess like this, I sometimes trim it down. Sometimes I don't. Uh, and then I'm just going to start laying them along the edges of these things. So this one I could put here and open up 
but then I've got this extra here. So I've got, I've either got to attach something to here to make it longer to go along this whole seam, or I could cut it off here and then have this as a two patch and this would then be a four patch. Does that make sense? So what I'm looking for, oh, and then here's how we use these like wonky pieces like this. So we just wanna go along a straight edge so sometimes you take from this corner to this corner and you're gonna cut off this edge here. So like if we were, it looks like they might match up here about the same length. So I'm going from this corner to this corner. And even though I've got this weird peak here, does that, can you see that? When I lay them together, I've got this weird little peak, but I'm going from this corner. So these two match up and these two match up. So as I go along there, when I open up, I'll show you. Let me go sew these together and I'll show you. Okay, so I've sewn them together. So when I open it up, now I've got this. Oops, this is where no seams match up, nothing has to be square, and this is totally legit. Now I can trim off this little bit of extra back here and this is no longer a crumb, this is just garbage. That's teeny tiny. So I press it open, and now I've got another four patch, technically one, two, three, four, right? Something else could go along this edge over here, and get us moving in a different direction. So we'll get to that in a second, but now, you have a choice. You can either start doing like what I was just doing and building off of one bigger piece, or you can start making a bunch of four patches. I've got these few that I cut out before, remember? So I'm gonna keep those in this pile. And I am going to just start piecing together these. And what I wanna find is two edges that seem about the same length. And think about your edges from all different angles. Sometimes you have to spin a piece around to see if you can get it to fit, right? Like there, okay, those two, this edge and this edge, so I can flip them on top of each other and that can get sewn together as a four patch. I'll set that over in my little sew to be sewn pile. This is a bigger guy here. So what I probably will do is cut a piece of that off and make my two patch smaller. Now see how I've got all kinds of weird edge there going on because that obviously got cut strange at some point but that's okay because we'll sew right over that and it won't even really matter those two look like they're about the same length so I'm gonna lay them right sides together and those go into my sewing pile and I'm just gonna keep matching stuff up and it doesn't in traditional quilting you would want you know, usually the seams to line up and stuff. Here, we're not even thinking about that. All we're thinking about is getting four pieces or two, two patches sewn together in whatever way possible, as long as the right sides are together and the seam matches up approximately. We don't even need it to match up super well. Oh, I think this one was long enough. so that can go there. So I'm gonna just keep working on this, getting these lined up, and um, then I will take them to the machine and sew them together. so I can sew and quilt organize in one it's gonna be odd but I think it should work so I'm gonna send these ones that I was matching up through the machine here's another example of having like a weird point I am going to be sewing along not following this obviously I'm following along this bottom one so I'm gonna keep going straight and then we'll just end up cutting part of that off So I'm going to just keep putting these 
two these two two patches that are now becoming four patches I'm gonna keep putting them together through the machine and we're gonna end up with another long uh, string of multiple patches together even little tiny crumbs like this match up and go through we're gonna end up with some very small little pieces and that is totally okay. It actually kind of provides interest in the, the way it ends up the finished product. patch here and it's long and skinny and one of these other ones doesn't want to match up with it so what I can do is take two of these and sew them together and then they will fit along the edge of that so that's what I'm going to do here is attach two of these and then I will cut them apart so essentially we're making more than a two patch right let me cut them off of my long chain here. So now we've got, this is a four patch, one, two, three, four. And whoops, I gotta make sure I'm in my new candle camera angle. But now these two pieces fit together. So I am going to fold them over and I'll be able to sew these two together to make another big patch. And then I will cut all of those apart and open them up. But here I just wanna kind of I'm gonna have some overage there and that's fine. All right, so then when I open that up, now I've got longer pieces here. This does not want to finger press because it's a like a tweed, like a suit fabric. Anyway, there I've got a longer um, I've got a longer strip so this is a four piece down here attached to my two piece up here and now together they make a six piece I guess. So I'm going to cut apart all of these others. I'm going to set aside some of that scrappage. I'm going to cut these and open them up. I set this one aside because you can see that it has a little extra down here. We can either cut that off or as we are lining stuff up, it'll get cut off itself as well. So it's it, that's not a big deal if you've ended up with somewhere it just didn't match up quite all the way and you've got a little extra, that's fine. So now I'm going to, let's see, I got to push some of this back so because that's all in my shot. Get out, scrappies. Um, okay, now we're going to take some of our patches and what we start doing, so this is the one where we joined six, is now we just start joining together larger pieces. Now I would have done this one except these two are similar, whoops, let's see, can I get more in the frame here, yeah. Okay, these two are similar, they're there, not similar, they're the same, so I'm not going to line those two up. Um, you see some of these are like longer strippy pieces, so we'll go, okay, those two would go together here, so I can sew them along that side. At some point here, you can either decide to continue making, you know, multiple patches and then opening those up and putting the patches together, patches together, or you can start building off of a center and just making a larger project. Um, I'm going to keep making some patches because sometimes you get a piece that's got like a large chunk. Let me see. Like here, this one. So this has got this piece here that's kind of large and I actually like the smaller look. So you can take it 
and cut it in half and now we've got like a three patch and a two patch and you can line those up along the edges of some other pieces and then you'll get you know something more unique happening there so um, I will probably sew these two together like so actually no I'm gonna want to go with one that's gonna get me all the way to this from this edge down here all the way up to this edge so I'm gonna find one that's a little bit longer that can do that so I'm gonna kind of create a straight edge here by putting those two together and then these little points will get snipped off so let me put those two together And when we open that up, we've got, here's where the wonkiness comes in. And we make this straight edge here and we've got these extra pieces so I can go in. Some bulk is, like I said, some bulk is okay. Some gets to be a little too much. You don't want, you know, big hunks because then it'll be lumpy. So now we've got this piece. We've got all kinds of wonky bits and pieces sewn together. We've got tiny little pieces of some fabrics peeking through there and I love this. We can come with another straight piece here. We could come with something that would go from this corner all the way across to this corner and line that up. So if we had something longer, right, we could go, well this isn't quite long enough, but we could go all the way up to there and then when we opened it up, we'd end up with that. So you keep just kind of cutting off corners, cut, making straight lines, making wonky lines, and you just keep going and building and building. Um, I'm gonna make some more blocks. So taking some of my you know, pieces here and pieces here and keep attaching them together. And um, this is kind of addicting and it's kind of like putting puzzle pieces together, you know? Uh, you just see what fits, what fits where. And I'm just gonna keep going with this. I'm gonna line up pieces and see what fits. So I'm gonna sew a bunch more of these together and then we'll come back and open them up. blocks I don't even know we've I've lost track of how many patches because they're all a little different so now we've got multiple patches on each one and um, on this one like I said this one now has kind of these two bigger pieces here and I want smaller so I'm gonna just make the executive decision to cut that in half and that's gonna go back down to being a smaller block set this was two longer strips that I sewed together. And now we've got kind of strip sets. I think strip sets is a thing. Oh, one other thing I thought of as I was sewing um, is the one thing, you know, you're gonna get wonky little slices and pieces and cuts of things. And that's good, that's totally cool. The one thing you have to try to do your best on if you're like me, you're not, um, you're used to sewing on paper where it's easier to make straight lines. I feel like uh, fabric moves and skews and, you know, does this. And especially when you're doing this, where you're working with some fabrics that are biased and some that are straight grained and some that have more stretch and some that are floppier and some that are stiffer, you're going to end up with ones that want to pull and tug in weird ways. So just try to make your sewing lines as straight as you can when you're joining two pieces. Otherwise you end up with like if the if this curved in here like it did a little bit here and so I've got a little bit of a bulge. We can fix that later on a little bit or you can just kind of 
finger press the hem a little differently um, or the seam excuse me but just that's one thing it'll make your life a little easier if you try to make your seams you know as straight as possible um, I love how these are starting to get you know wonky and weird and we're gonna just work on trying to join those together like I said it's like a puzzle and you just got to figure out how to fit all these weird pieces together. This one, again, I've got this excess. So f to make things easy right now, I'm just going to cut that, that piece off. It'll make joining those two edges, you know, with whatever I'm going to join that to. <laughs> It'll make it a little easier. Again, opening these up is like a surprise. You never know what you're going to get when you open two that you've joined. And this one's got some excess back here, so I'm going to trim some of that off. But you open them up and you never know what it's going to look like in there, and it's kind of fun. And I um, don't mind how it uses up scrappiness. That one has got a little edge on it, so how it uses up some of these pieces of fabric and stuff. Um, and I like how they kind of aren't all matchy-matchy. If you could certainly do this and make it more matchy-matchy if that's your style. Okay, so now we've got all these piles, right? Of bigger pieces. Now we've got to start joining the bigger pieces together. And again, it is essentially the same process. Oh, Wayfair wants to tell me something on my phone. Uh, and it's essentially the same process. We're just looking for edges that are approximately the same. Let me make sure I'm in. Oops. Let's get some of the busyness out of view here. Let's put those chunks over there. Those just keep wanting to come in. Um, okay. So we're looking for two pieces that are roughly the same length that we can join together. Again, this one's got some curve to it, which is just fine. It's got a little curve to it, but this has got a straight edge. So what we can do is lay them together, face, you know, the right sides together. And I'm going to line this up to the edge here. And then I'm going to take the other corner of it down to the other corner of that. And you can see we've got some mismatched here, but that will go along this part of it. And this part over here will just get, the excess will get trimmed off. And this is what continues to make us those weird wonky lines that I love. Um, you could, again, I'm going to show you a different way, probably in the next video, that we can do this in a different manner with long strips to make like a, a strip pieced quilt kind of look. And then um, I'm going to show you one more probably where it's, I think it's called quilt as you go. So I'll show you that one as well. But this is, I think, my favorite, the crumb quilty piece, because this is literally just like figuring it out um, as you go and putting all the big and small and tiny pieces together. This is where I am trying to go as straight as I can and not move it, you know, not skew it. Um, it can get trimmed off, but again, if you, if you get too skewed, then it it's harder to finger press open and it won't lay as nice. Okay, so my line goes right here. So all this is excess. So I'm going to trim up to like what, you know, what would have been a quarter inch seam allowance if I had been going along a normal, you know, type of line. All this extra is toast. It's not toast, it's crumbs. <laughs> okay. Now, I like it. I like how that looks so far. Again, we're going to end up with some weird pieces piecing over here. So we're going to have to come along this edge and we'll probably lose parts of this block. But that is fine. That is fine. So now I'm just building off of this is going to eventually turn into a larger piece. So since I have this edge that goes kind of in my vision, right, it goes from this edge up here and it can come down along to this point down here, I'm gonna look for a piece and we'll lose a chunk of this block and that's fine. Um, so I've got a piece here and you've noticed that I've stopped trying to make sure that the colors 
don't, you know, aren't going right up against each other. You can try to be careful about that at this point, but I kind of stop caring when I'm doing the piecing of the bigger pieces together. Um, so I'm going to go like this. We're going to lose a portion of this, but I'll save it because I might want to put it onto something, you know, there might be a place for it. Uh, I am also totally, as you can tell, not worried about making this into like a finished square shape. We're just going to cut it down into whatever our finished, you know, measurements need to be. And if I make a big enough piece, I can use it for um, a couple of journals, a couple of needle books. Uh, we're essentially just creating like a piece of fabric. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to keep this piece. I'm going to cut that little thing off but I'm gonna keep this piece and we'll open this up all right I hope this is making some sense to you so see how I've got these larger blocks over here and these are starting to turn into smaller some of them just very tiny little peaks of stuff and these will eventually get probably cut down as we continue to piece and go over top of things now I've got a long edge right here, but I don't think I'm going to try and address that right now because I don't have any pieces that would be long enough to go there. But I've got this weird little chunk here. So let's see if I've got anything that will, oh, that's promising. That will fit along there. That's just not quite long enough. I've got a longer one here. Oh, I think that'll do it. So I'm going from, again, I'm trying to make it reach all the way over to the corner here. And then I'm going to take this corner to this edge. And we're going to end up with some weird seaming in here. But that's fine, again, because we're just making a giant weird wonky chunk of cloth. <laughs> you have to divorce yourself from trying to make straight anything right and now uh, what I'm doing is checking underneath to make sure that I'm going to catch all of this and so what I need to do is get this lined up down here and make sure that if I go straight from this one toward my finger here I'm going to catch everything and not leave a hole and I think that should be the case and we'll just have excess to cut off which is fine I'm just trying to make a straight line as much as possible. Okay, now I'm going to cut off all that excess. And open that up. And look at there. So these two clearly are the same fabric and they're right next to each other, but that is okay because at this point we're just getting, you know, this big fun thing going on. I have a big long edge here that I'm going to need a big long piece for, and I've got a couple of these longer strip pieces. So what I'm going to do, I think, is attach a couple of these longer strip pieces together so that I can then attach them to, you know, larger piece to larger piece. I think is what I'm gonna go for. That's a lot of green there, but eventually I can flip this whole piece around. So I'm gonna attach those two. I'm gonna attach these two together. That line wasn't straight when I sewed it. I could tell as I was going. That's okay. It's opening up okay. All right, now back in with our big piece. And that's what I wanted to avoid was that. So, except this is more curvy, but that should be, well, maybe I will go this way. It's fine. And this, because it curves off, is going to have to come over there. Yeah. So, again, guys, this is where it just starts turning into puzzle pieces and you do your best to sew these pieces all together 
And by doing this and cutting off then wide swaths and chunks here, you're going to end up with some very interesting small little tiny corners and little tiny strips of things. And um, that's kind of what I really like. And it's just ends up being by chance as you sew these long seams. This one should be an interesting one to open. Yeah, all right. So look at this, it's starting to look like a crazy quilt, right? Like the craziest patchwork quilt and it's getting so large that I'm having a hard time keeping it in frame here. Um, I feel like this, I've got this weird rounded edge here so that kind of needs to start being addressed. So what I'm gonna do is sew a bunch of these pieces together to make one long piece and then we're gonna lay it over that and tr do some trimming. I'm gonna also trim off here. Okay, again, I'm gonna lay some of these together and make a longer strip. All right guys, so now I've got this long strip here and um, I wanted to show you something. Can I find it again or did I lose it or was it on the other piece? Oh, so here I've ended up with this tiny little triangle corner here pieced in there and we might lose that entirely as we go across an edge or something, but I love those little tiny things. That's so unintentional and it just kind of ends up that way. Here is my larger piece now. So how we've got this kind of weird curved edge thing going on here. So I think I might try to address that by potentially laying this over top of it. Um, let's see. And yeah, I might just cut, like I might just cut off because it comes about, if I match up that edge over there, it comes to about here and I've still got this. So I'm gonna just cut that off. And we can piece this chunk in somewhere else if we need to um, because when I do this now I am trying to make sure that I've got a long enough piece that I can cut my you know book covers out of uh, and then whatever is left over can end up being pockets and things in there too or for future projects what I'm gonna do now is turn this over and lay it across here and I'm gonna sew those on there. We're gonna end up losing some of this down here, but I'm okay with that again. I just wanna make sure I get from edge to edge. And this stuff that we end up cutting, whoops, this stuff that we end up cutting off could end up going on somewhere else as well, being pieced on. Um, that's the beauty of this is as long as you've got little chunks left. So now the longer pieces like this, get way more difficult to keep that seam straight. So I'm gonna do my best, my darndest, to try and make a straight seam along here, or straight, um, yeah, seam, I guess. A straight line. I'm gonna try and keep the fabric going straight. Now, before I open it up, I'm gonna cut along that and give myself more of just a regular seam allowance. Okay, so I've got two, um, I've got one long piece here that I can definitely, that strip could go along an edge, right? Because that's still got a substantial amount of fabric on it. And this, so here we go, here's one tiny little triangle again there. So now we've got more loveliness and um, I can look at this and go, okay, this way could be a cover. I can see a cover coming that way. 
or I can go this way and see a cover coming across this way. And if we do it that way, then maybe what I want to do is add it on to this end a little bit if I can. And I've got some pieces here that I could probably attach to maybe make this more rather than coming to a point here to try and make it end up being a little more um, rectangular, if you will. So this piece looks like it might fit across here fairly well. It needs something else. It needs a little length on that end. So let's see if I can just put, attach a few pieces. This is where you just end up throwing stuff in. If you've got leftover two patches that you haven't used or whatever, like you just end up, again, this is like as you go, as you go. So I think I'm going to make this longer by sewing a few chunks. Well, let's see, let's sew these together and then sew them on there. Okay, so I've got this lie had sewing machine problems and I had to mess all with that for a minute. But now I've got this long kind of piece here going. I've got a little bit left, this little chunk left at the end here. I think what I'm going to do is just attach it on this last edge here. And um, that'll just give me one more little chunk that I can work with as I am um, cutting out my covers. So I like how this is kind of a long and skinny. I've got this weird little chunk over here, but that's okay because as I trim, I'll end up with this piece and we can use that for something else. Um, it's no big deal. And again, like I said, this is all just, if I've said the word wonky once, I've said it a hundred times. This is all about just working these pieces together. Um, I feel like that is not sewing again. It's not, it came unthreaded. Cha! So there's my last little piece sewn on and there's no way I can like show you this all in one frame. <laughs> but essentially I have created this large piece. I might create another piece like this and keep working off of this edge um, off camera. I'm, I, you know, I think, I, I hope um, that you kind of get the idea of what we're doing here. Uh, once I've got an even bigger piece, which I might just do again, keep working off this edge because then I could get two journal covers out of this. Um, and I think I'll use this colorway to make the ones um, out of my digital kit. So if I keep uh, or my needle book kit at least. So I might just keep working off this edge in order to build this this way a little bit more so that I've got more um, room to make two long kind of narrow journal covers. So I'm going to keep working on that and then I will see you back uh, in a minute for kind of the next piece of this. And we're going to see, I might need to break this into two because the next steps are going to take more than a few minutes. So I just, I hope that you've, oh, look at, I found a little hole here. I need to go back over the back side of that. Um, let me show you right there. See that? So what I need to do is tuck that in. I'm going to pinch it with my fingers from the bottom and I am going to find that spot. I promise you, next time I will have a better setup going on here. Yep, that fixed it. So I'm going to keep working off of um, this edge up here and this edge over here. And then I will um, meet you in either the next video or the next segment of this. I'm not really sure. Uh, I do need to get ready to go to Joy's, Joy's volleyball game. So no matter what I see, when I see you, it'll probably be the next day in my world. <laughs> All right. Okay, guys, so it is the next day, and <laughs> um, I did finish doing some just piecing again. You didn't miss much. All I did is cut, um, the, I cut two pieces apart because I kind of grew it big enough and then um, sliced off two different pieces because I'm going to use them two different pieces to make this cover. And uh, so I've got this piece here, um, and then I have got this longer, skinnier piece here. 
and this is my only waist. So this is the only part that like I didn't re-sew anywhere. I could have reattached it to the end of this or something, but honestly, this is way longer than I'll need at this point. What I did was kind of dry fit, you know, if you will, and to just make sure that I'd have enough that it was tall enough to fit my signature, which it is on both here and here, and over here it's even wider, and then made sure that um, not only is it wide enough, but I have enough to cover. So I do um, on both pieces. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is um, put cut cut it down to the size we want it and then put some sort of binding around the edge so the um this again this is i'm not a professional quilter so we're doing the nikki method which is you know just fine so um what we want to do is measure our signature so if you're using my kit my needle book kit then this will be uh fairly standard for you what i'm doing here but you can do this with whatever kit or whatever paper you're choosing to use, you can make it your own size. So that's the beauty of this. If you wanna make a very little tiny needle book that just is only a needle book, this will work for that too. So what I'm gonna do is measure my signature because I've got some that stick out a little extra. So, um, but when I bind them in, that'll take care of that too. So it's about five inches wide by just under six inches tall. And I'm gonna want some extra seam allowance, and he, um, or not seam allowance, I'm gonna want extra allowance because remember how this book is tied into the back. So we're not covering just this book, we're covering this book and the needle insert, the felt insert, um, and so this cover has to be bigger than this book. So it has to be wide enough and tall enough to accommodate this being tied into the back. So if my signature is about five inches, I'm gonna say I probably wanna go six inches. So I kind of mark it with my finger here and push it over and go, yeah, that seems wide enough for a back cover that I could attach a tie or some sort of fixture to get it in there. So I'm gonna want my needle book to be six inches wide or my cover to be six inches wide and then um, since I am about six inches, just shy of six inches tall, I'm going to say I want it to be six and a half inches tall. So again, I'm marking with my finger and just kind of visualizing how that goes. So if I'm adding about a half inch to both. So again, I'm going to want, um, I'm going to, what, what did I say? Oh my gosh, six inches by six and a half, roughly, um, maybe a little more than six and a half. So I am going to cut my um, cover to that size, roughly, right? Now again, I'm going six inches wide, but that's gotta be doubled, so I need, right, 12 inches wide. And so I'm using my ruler because I'm kind of, then I can move it around here and visualize what part of this piece do I want. Um, you can also do that just visually. You can also cut this just visually with the book. And I believe that's probably what I did and then measured and trimmed a little bit. So you can kind of see, if you use this, you can kind of see what it would look like, what part of it you would get if you cut there. And then you can see what your front and back cover would look like. And of course, it, if you like that as the front, which I kind of do, you can flip it around and it could be the front that way. So I think what I'm going to do is go here and I like this end and I like this, this chunk right in here specifically. So I'm going to go like this, fold this over and I'm going to just rough cut this end of this fabric off. And now save this because this is just a scrappy, beautiful piece of stuff that you've made. And we'll put it in the same pile with this. And you can use this as like clusters. You can use this as a future piece of a larger thing. Um, you know, whatever. You can use it for a lot of different stuff. So now we're cut down to a smaller kind of working size piece here. And I am going to refold this over and decide. 
I like this portion the best. So I'm going to say I want to go roughly and right now I can feel where my book is. I can feel where my signature is. It's there. It's there. It's there. So I can see here's the edge of mine. So um, I'm going to I wish I could show you what I'm like feeling, but I'm just feeling for my signature underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this visually. If that totally freaks you out, by all means, go ahead and measure and mark or pin or whatever you want to do. I am literally cutting this visually. So I'm going to leave my signature right here. I know I've got enough space when I fold that over. So I'm going to trim and you don't have to give yourself seam allowance here because we're going to be binding the edge. We're not going to be like needing to fold over for a hem or anything. Again, save this. This is kind of like a, um, whatchamacallit strip. Oh my gosh, my words fail me. So then I'm, I've got my edge here. So I'm going to very carefully just turn this over. And then I'm going to scoot it about a half inch so I can make my cut on this end. Because remember, we want it a little bit bigger than our signature. Okay. Now I'm going to go this way. And for this one, I am going to use my ruler just so, because it's a longer cut. So I want to make sure that I get a nice cut. And I'm going to go like this especially because I've got some lines that aren't straight so if I start cutting and my eye catches one of those li sewing lines then that's going to be bad let me grab my I'm going to grab my rotary cutter this one is pretty dull so um I'm going to do this let's see I got to turn it around cuz I'm trying to figure out how to do this and stay on camera the best I can but I need to cut with my right hand for sure otherwise this is going to be a mess okay there make sure I've got enough on both sides make sure I'm lined up straight up there with my cut and go down here and yes I am going to cut right on my plywood desk oh so it's so dull I'm going to finish the cut with my scissor. <laughs> it's gone through most of the spots, but I think that's because I really stupidly the other day, I need to figure out a way to tie cloth onto, because I have two of these, one that I use for paper and one that I use for fabric. I think this is the fabric one, but I think I've used them both for, for uh, paper inadvertently. All right, so now we've got our straight cut there, and I just need one more straight cut up top here. I'm going to place my ruler. And again, I am eyeballing because this is not an exact art, if you haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> All right, I think what I'm going to do is try to use this again, and then I can um, scissor the rest if I need to. It probably doesn't help that I'm cutting on plywood either. My self-healing mat is over in a different part of my studio and I don't want to get up and go get it. And there's not room for it right now. Okay, so now I have my rough cut cover here. I've got enough allowance. So... Can you kind of see? Let's see. You can see how I've got extra, right? And now when we put the binding on, that will give us a little extra as well. But uh, to do this, what we want to do is, you know, we don't want this on the inside, or maybe you do, and that's fine. But it's not as stable as we would like either. We want to put something on the back. So I've got um, a couple options here. But this blue cloth, I've got a big enough scrap of this that I think, yeah, that should fit this way. Maybe it's exactly wide enough. 
Oofta. Exactly wide enough. Did I just say oofta? <laughs> All right, so let's cut that down. We want wrong sides together here. And I'm going to trim that to size. So now I've got some backing cloth, which will make the inside look a little nicer. And now you have a choice to make. You can at this point, so this is going to be, you know, fairly flimsy. If you wanted to at this point, you could take a piece of felt. Hold on. <clears throat> you could take a piece of our cheap felt and put it inside as a type, or if you had some like quilt batting or something, you could put this inside as a type of um, batting, basically, like liner cloth. And uh, mine is actually exactly the width, and it's kind of like a stabilizer. It's kind of like a, um, it just gives it some more weight and heft keep this because we will definitely use that in our book. All right, so now I've got my piece of backing fabric. I've got a piece of felt to go in the middle. And now I am making sure that I've got right sides facing out and felt in the middle. That will give us a little bit more stability in our uh, cover. Now we need something to go around the edge. And you can do uh, anything, you know, any type of thing that you want. You just have to have a long enough piece of it. You could use actual seam binding here. You could use um, strips of cloth that you've torn off. I just happen to have this long strip of like it feels kind of like a linen or something and it's kind of blue. So I'm going to cut myself some strips of this to use around the edge of this. And you can make them whatever um, you know width you want. I'm going to use pinking shears because I'm leaving the edges exposed uh, and this has got a, a raw edge on it so I'm going to cut that off. Okay, I'll save this because I'll use it for something else I'm sure. Now to get the same width of strips I'm going to fold this over because I'm going to need more than one of these strips it's not long enough to go around I'm going to need probably two so to get the same width I'm just going to fold it over and I will cut down the line here and then I will cut it apart into two halves um, in order to keep it roughly the same I think I'm going to throw a few pins in just while I'm cutting strips here <laughs> and all kinds of little things hangers on I have uh, lovingly eyeballed them and uh, again remember we're going for rustic and what we're gonna do then is this will make a nice finished edge all the way around so we're gonna put it roughly halfway and then this side will fold up and then as we stitch across the top here, it's going to catch both the front and the back and it will put a nice finished edge around this whole fabric. If you don't like the rough edge thing, you could make your strip a little wider, fold it over itself and then pin it and you'd get a nice finished edge that way. Um, I, like I said, I don't mind the semi-finished, you know, look here, the rough edge, the rustic edge. So that's what I am going with. I'm going to leave myself a little extra room over here because we have to miter some corners as we go around the edges. Again, miter and corner, that sounds really um, fancier than I'm actually doing. I do use pins for this. And uh, all I'm going to do is start pinning, folding over. And then I pin just because there's so many dang layers to try and keep together 
that I don't want to try and, you know, be managing the layers and the binding, you know, strips and all that together. That's too much to try and hold together and sew. So uh, that's why I pin this part. Make sure you've got all the layers going all the way. Plus this allows you the chance, once you get these pinned, it allows you the chance to flip it over and make sure that your binding is about the same on the front and the back. Um, because otherwise the stitches won't catch. You want the stitches to catch both, all, all the layers. So technically, I guess this is the front of the binding, the quilt top, the felt, the backing fabric, and the back of the lining all at the same time. Okay, then when we get to the corner, you can do one of two things. You can cut it off and just start a new piece, or you can try to round the corner. It is a little bit of finagling. Again, I am uh, not a quilter. So this is how I do it. I literally kind of hold it up and round it with my fingers and get to this next side, like so. Like I would keep pinning and then I'm gonna pin that down in a second. So I put my first pin in over on this side. And then I come back to this corner and you'll have like something that looks like this. And so I literally just kind of pinch it up till I've got the little square. And then I uh, fold it over in one direction or the other. And I do the same on the front. So I'm going to push in with my nail and fold over the top of it. And you end up with a somewhat semi mitered corner. And you just kind of have to zhuzh it around for a minute until you get something that you're satisfied with and then pin it right away. <laughs> so it'll stay that way as you sew over it. And try not to pin yourself. There we go. So I've got that. Then I just keep going. I'm going to keep going around the whole thing and um, I'll see you in a second. I forgot to mention that you gotta sew the two pieces together, duh. So I'm gonna sew them like this so that when they fold out, right, I'm just gonna run them through my machine. Luckily, I haven't pinned that far yet. actually decided what I'm going to do to end it is snip off the excess right to the end of uh, where I'm binding here and then I'm going to come with my uh, binding strip that I'm coming up the side with and I'm going to cut myself maybe a half inch seam allowance like so and then I'm just going to fold let me see if I can show you here I'm going to fold this over Here. So now I'm come right to the edge of this and I've folded over here and then that gives me a clean edge there and then I'll just fold over and pin that and so you end up with something that looks like this but it gives you at least a little bit nicer finish there that'll kind of match the other corners as well. All right, so here I've got my pinned piece, right? And now I just literally am going to zigzag. I'm gonna put it on a wide zigzag and go around the edges of this.
guys. Here is I have my finished, well, finished product. Finished so far. So there is my little mini quilt, right? My little mini quilt cover. And it is by no means perfect, but it will fit this little book in the back. It will fit a chunky needle signature in there. And it is adorable in my mind. Now, because none of these fabrics are going in any one direction, you can decide which you like to be the front or the back. I think I like this to be the front of mine. So um, we will, you know, do all the next steps next. But this is the size of this chunky needle book <laughs> to fit this signature, you know, tied into the back here. And then there's plenty of space for there to be um, the signature. And I like it to be chunky. It's got great hand feel. The last step and the last thing that you can do is if you don't like, does it, if it feels too separate or something, you can do at this point some quilting. And I did do that on um, the uh, one of the other covers. So you can go through with your machine and um, pick out some lines like this. So let me come up closer here. You can pick out some lines, like say you could put your machine down here and go along this straight line and then maybe turn and go across this line and then maybe come up this line a little bit and go across and, you know, just follow some of your seams like you kind of would quilting or you could do just overall quilting. You could kind of go in a swirly pattern over the top and then just know it's going to show up back here like a normal quilt would. You could Ivan, uh, Ivan, either or even together apparently is Ivan. You could either um, or even put some little yarn ties like, you know, when you have the quilt that's got the little tied off yarn, you could put some of those in here and that would certainly look very cute as well and be very quilt esque but um this one because I've got the felt in there it does stabilize it quite a bit and so I'm feeling good with where this one is at maybe I'll do some little machine quilting to the other one and show you you know the difference in the next video but um I think <coughs> excuse me for now I am going to call this a video and uh, then we'll come back in the next one I'll have the other one of these finished as well like I said, I'll maybe do some little line sewing on there and just show you the difference. And then um, I will talk to you about two other ways that you can achieve kind of a quilted cover as well. Um, but they're just different, a uh, slightly different result at the end. So anyway, thanks for joining me for this sewing extravaganza. Thanks for putting up with my weird camera angles and trying so hard to stay and get all of this in focus. Please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will answer them the best I can. Or if it's something I'd, it'd be easier for me to show, I'll just show you in the next video. Um, or I'll even make a Q&A follow up if I if I need to to show you guys. I I want to make sure that you understand what I'm doing. If, if you want to, if you want to know what I'm doing, if you want to understand or if something wasn't clear to you. Anyway, thanks for joining me, guys. I hope that you are having a wonderful morning or afternoon or evening or maybe it's the middle of the night. Whatever time it is on whatever side of this planet of ours that you live on, I hope that you're doing well. And until I see you next time, take care, stay safe, and God bless you. Bye, guys.